Ms. Suparna Ganguly. She is the co-founder and president of Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Center and founding trustee of CUPA. She is on the advisory board of Help Animals India USA and on various state committees for animal welfare. She was awarded Nari Shakti Puraskar 2015 by Honorable President of India and many other awards that in recognition over the years. Ms. Sheila Rao, she is the Honorary Secretary and Trustee of WRRC and Co-Founding Trustee of CUPA. She was awarded Special Achievement Award in 2016 by Karnataka Veterinary Association for the Promotion of Animal Welfare. She is also the Chairperson of Independent Ethics Committee which reviews protocols for human clinical trials. And the topic for today that they'll be discussing is rescue and rehabilitation of wild animals. So please put your hands together and welcome our illustrious speakers. Good morning to everyone. And uh, I'm so happy to be here with my colleague, uh, Suparna. And um, thank you to Mimi Patsasarthi for inviting us and um, so we can uh, talk about the work that we have been doing. Um, Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Center, WRRC, was started in the year 1999. And uh, it was started by um, the trustees of CUPA. CUPA is uh, Compassion Unlimited Plus Action which is um, an organization that works with uh, welfare of domestic animals. So it was started in 1991 and uh, we were working with dogs, cats, cattle, donkeys, all uh, the domestic uh, animals in the city. And then we realized that there was a huge component of wildlife, especially urban wildlife, that uh, needed to be um, addressed and uh, so in 1999, WRRC was started and um, uh, we started the first, our first center, which was the Banargata Rehabilitation Center, uh, which is near the Banargata Zoo. Uh, while we were doing this, um, the plight of captive elephants uh, was also uh, brought to our notice and um, we realized that there was a lot more to be done in that field as well. So in uh, 1998, there was a Gazette notification which banned five species of animals from circuses. So there were lions, tigers, bears, panthers, uh, and monkeys oh. were, not, uh, were banned from uh, circuses, but elephants were not included in this, um, in this list. And um, then we realized that uh, the captive elephants, there were so many of them in different regimes, you know, they were in uh, re religious institutions, they were in um, zoos, uh, circuses, and uh, in uh, private custody. Um, so under the guidance of Dr. Sukumar, uh, we conducted an all India survey of captive elephants and um, we uh, were shocked and disheartened by the kind of um, the, the kind of um, uh, you know uh, instances where uh, these animals were uh, being kept in such appalling conditions and they were such an important part of our uh, basically our ethos ever uh, you know uh, ganesha is the god that we uh, cannot move forward without every time, like in today's um, um, uh, function also. Uh, this is the first God we pray to, but the elephant as an animal is really hasn't got the, its um, due respect and um, uh, I think the due importance it needs. So, um, Starting with the, with the Banargata Rescue Center, the Rehabilitation Center. Um, this is the first center uh, which we started in the year 1999 on uh, seven acres of land that was given by the Forest Department. 
and um, uh, we realized there were so many animals that were suffering in and around Bangalore and at that time uh, Bangalore was just developing and the city was growing larger and larger and um, outlying areas where there used to be fields and um, you know totally uh, forested areas were now being uh, developed so we had um, a huge uh, lot of animals coming to us like snakes with terrible injuries when they were being uh, uh, you know when land was being excavated for buildings then um, we found there were so many um, lorises that were uh, subjected to black magic so those and uh, those poor creatures were brought to us uh, with uh, terrible injuries uh, because someone had performed some kind of um, black magic on them. Uh, we had literally sacks of uh, tortoises which were confiscated by the police at an airport and were sent to us, almost 400 of them, you know, crammed one on top of the other. And um, f fortunately, we could save many of them. Um, there were uh, parakeets which were being smuggled, again, in sacks, so we had about uh, 20 to 30 uh, of these tiny birds, uh, again, um, brought in um, r various stages of uh, uh, injury and uh, malnutrition. So um, at uh, Banargata, we have a resident uh, manager, we have a full-time veterinarian, and we have a staff that looks after 80 to 100 animals on any given uh, day and um, these animals are treated and fortunately most of them do make it um, and we release them back in the wild. Uh, coming to our uh, captive animal uh, facility, uh, captive elephant uh, facility, um, just last year we moved to our new facility which is near uh, Kolar and um, uh, we are working on forest department land working with the department um, and the department has been extremely encouraging and um, the infrastructure has been built by them we do the day-to-day -day management and um, we are happy to that we are able to give the five animals that are with us at the moment a much much better uh, life than they were leading because uh, whether they were the uh, tourist um, elephants in Jaipur which give rides to you know people up the Amir fort or uh, the uh, the ones uh, in Punjab the wandering uh, elephants of Punjab or whether it is um, the Puram elephants of uh, Kerala which uh, really I think uh, are in an appalling state uh, all these animals need somewhere to go and the department, we are very thankful to the Karnataka Forest Department for recognizing this need and for, um, you know, um, giving us this uh, land. I think you can see the visuals of um, the animals um, which uh, have been in uh, captive uh, in custody of uh, uh, private owners or uh, temples or uh, other religious institutions. Apart from this, we are uh, happy to be uh, engaged in many outreach programs uh, with um, uh, a CSR from the uh, company HCL and uh, our uh, doctor and our uh, program coordinator uh, work with the schools around Banargata, talking to, small, to children and telling them about uh, wildlife conservation in which they can do in their own uh, f you know areas uh, what illegal uh, activities are happening around I, I was wondering if we could sort of go beyond uh, you know the rescue and rehabilitation you know I, I don't think we'll come to the illegal activity which is a different issue really yeah. but I think uh, elephants pose enormous problems you know when it comes to especially the captive elephant and what do we do with captive elephants and uh, certainly in the, in the, the present-day uh, scenario of increasing conflicts between elephants and people, it's probably inevitable that we already have 2,500 elephants in captivity. 
and uh, probably more will be coming into captivity in the in the coming years uh, what are the three main issues that you think you can we, we should address as a society you know uh, which will uh, uh, maybe three or four that will address the real welfare issues of overall of elephants in captivity you know think we can rescue a few elephants that are suffering keep them in rescue centers you know four or five or six or whatever but then we have the, we have them in the hundreds and the thousands so i was wondering what the real challenges are that we will be able to yes yeah please sir. so Parna, maybe you can answer that yeah thank you dr sukumar um what you see of course reflects the bigger picture for which a lot of information was needed. So when we started this work, with the, actually with you and with uh, Mr. Varma, Surendra Varma, it was because there was tremendous lack of knowledge uh, in the animal welfare circles of the country as to uh, where do these animals come from, how are they procured, what is the acquisition, and what is happening. Nobody seemed to know anything. We were tracking transfers, gifts, donations, deaths, births, and uh, appalling conditions of captive elephants. So, and we saw and witnessed personally the training of an elephant in a religious institution with the Karnataka Forest Department uh, uh, presence there. Yeah. It, and it, it, uh, it's then we realized that we needed to know more. And when we came to, and before that, the, the captive elephants in the country uh, were, uh, um, there was a little, work done on it, information, and we published a book called Gods in Chains, and then it led to the project, which was the All India Project, that threw up a lot of vital information. Three, three issues. For us, rescue and re uh, rehabilitation is, is a, one, small a small so model that we would like what, what to What would project. be the other models that we think that we, we need to implement so that we can promote the welfare of elephants in captivity overall? The, the, big picture. the first thing is to, to highlight the uh, uh, unique uh, uh, conditions of elephants uh, which are very difficult to fulfill in captivity. So first we should try and see that whenever captivity is a question, it should be not with very privately owned uh, place, uh, elephants should not be in private small custodies, it should be with the government because it's only the government who has and the forest uh, departments that, that, yeah, who policy. have the extensiveness and they have the vistas where the elephants can right. be kept no, I, I fully agree with you. Now hmm. the elephants are in the hands of the government. Hmm. What steps do, do they need to take? Three steps that will ensure their welfare and captivity. They will need to have mahut training as a very, very essential point and to incorporate their methods and modern methods both in a very nice holistic attitude to the elephants. Number two, they should give the elephants at least a semblance of freedom by making them have some choices in what in the activities they choose, some semblance of their, their uh, freedom that they would have experienced in the wild but they don't and give them all opportunities to form uh, natural herds and they should have these are the few key things that an elephant should be so able what to do you manage think is, in yeah, uh, in terms captivity. of uh, a policy we need to sort of rethink our policy of how we keep elephants in captivity and where do we keep elephants in capt captivity we keep our elephants right now we have three four the uh, the the um, one which is in the hands of the state forest departments are the elephant camps and the elephant camps though or sometimes as they're very badly skewed in population ratios. Some may have 90%, 95% males. Others don't seem to have any uh, um, uh, females or uh, uh, old elephants. Right. So it's like a so very mixed bag. So we need to bag. sort of rethink and recreate the manner in which we keep uh, elephants Exactly. We and and there are so many welfare issues that would immediately be resolved if these points are kept in mind. Uh, you know, I have to say I've had the privilege and the pleasure of working with Sheila and with Suparna since 2015, mm. Mm. since you began with Anisha, yeah. mm. the captive elephant that they took on first and what their inspiration was. You've hit the nail on the head, Suparna. The first thing is awareness that, you know, and I remember you telling me the concept of, you know, going for an elephant ride or, you know, just saying that an elephant is something that we should just keep for various reasons, whatever it might be. That itself has big issues because an animal that is of that size and of that strength if it needs to be trained by somebody who's so weak, it obviously involves a different set of 
issues that are going to be and brought I think, up. And I think we should have the courage to experiment with captive conditions and elephants within different, different uh, models. There are models which are available to us, the forest camp model, yes. there is a hybrid model, there is the private keeping model, there's intensive uh, confinement models. I mean, we could use the good things from all of which them. Which is such a wonderful there must thing that be you good said. Things in many of You've them actually hit the nail on the head. So one is awareness. The second is what you actually have said very categorically. It is the forest department that needs to, we need the help of the forest department. We must engage because with the forest department. Because they have the land. They have and the land, And they yes. have the, the entire hierarchy, Even the infrastructure. infrastructure. And, the, and, and the expertise possibly. And, and they have the confidence. Yes. I mean, the confidence, the people repose in them. I would repose much more confidence in our government handling elephants than in two, three private institutions handling elephants. Absolutely. So you've got the forest department. The first is the, the awareness. The second is the involvement of the forest department and all issues And to related. experiment with experiment. different models of elephant keeping. And the goal is to try to give them a better quality of life. Of life. And for that, what and you mimicking naturalness as much as possible. And, and what you hit on the head very critically was the training of the elephant handler or the mahout. Because the mahout himself is has integral. the best of traditional, it's about, has. you know, blending he has the two-way science. He's got the knowledge, he's got the, the traditional wisdom on how And he has the courage. And he has the courage to manage the size yes, of an elephant. it's not easy. And to blend in the more humane ways of being able yes. to manage this entire yes. process. Am I right on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So this is wonderful. So and I'm I feel a lot of investment should be done with the Mahouts in terms of their, Absolutely. their, their building confidence or their, their uh, feeling of, uh, sometimes they have feelings of great uh, uh, inadequacy. Uh, so we should have experts in the field, you know, counseling experts, ther mental health professionals who will be working with all the people who work with elephants, not only the Mahouts. They, they, it would be in a, in a big kind of a program um, uh, 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 system where everybody has access to uh, different, different kinds of um, uh, counselling when it comes to facing challenges, uh, handling the inadequacies, thinking of different things, so, opening so, and uh, broadening so, their minds. So, so, How will their children be? They don't have anyone to talk to. Nobody cares to talk so to the them. So the Mahut is essentially, at the end of the day, is critical to the welfare of the yes, captivity. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. I think we'll yeah, so what I have to say that, you know, it's commendable. Sheila, why don't you come and sit down? Can we show that little clip for yes, two I seconds? Yes, it's commendable work that Sheila and Suparna we, have we, done. We can never hope to do anything. And it's absolutely commendable work. I've been part of their journey for the past eight years. And really they require a round of applause. Uh, you know, two real rabble-rousing women who've done fantastic work in this space. from very, very um, intensively confined uh, models of elephant keeping. Some of them have been very much abused. All of them lack confidence. They have never seen, a couple of them have never seen other elephants in their life. It has taken many years and many months of enormous patience working with the elephants and with the mahouts because they are also experiencing something they have not been trained to do. They have not been trained to uh, give time to the elephants, to have patience. So they are learning so many different things that they, they have not seen uh, uh, their fathers and things. Because they, the elephants that they have handled before are very regimentalized. 
So they know exactly, you know, what has to be done. But here we let them just be and limit interaction as much as possible. But they have very, to have very good relationship with their mouths. Well, thank you, Suparna and Sheila, because what can also happen, would you like to add something? Yeah, just one uh, point, because uh, we were saying traditional culture, all that. Uh, there are some um, uh, activities which fall under uh, culture and tradition. Uh, when they say, we've always had elephants uh, in temples. And uh, I mean, uh, the conditions of elephants in temples in those days is very, very different from what it was now. Because there, they would say, elephant would go to the river, bring water and, you know, to put on the idol. Now, where is the water, where is the river, and why do you need the elephant to do that? So, I think we can rethink some uh, ideas and not be called anti-culture or anti-India or anti-tradition because we choose to, uh, you know, question those uh, we were very concerned about this culture, anti-tradition, anti-India, anti-whatever. And we did a little study with the students of Azim Premji University. It was, uh, they just wanted a small research project for their new batch. So we asked them to go to at least five, six temples in Karnataka and go as devotees and re re ask them if in their uh, interaction with their deity or with the uh, uh, religious ceremonies, did they miss the presence of an elephant? These were in temples where elephant had been there but had been handed over to the department or maybe it had been sent to a center or something. And to, <laughs> to utter shock, some of the devotees didn't even know there was an elephant in the temple. Some of them didn't realize that it was missing in the, in the environment. And all of them came to the conclusion that they don't miss at all. There's no re problem uh, in their relationship with their God. Uh, elephant is definitely, I mean, it was very amusing to them. Wonderful, Suparna. And you know, the, the WRRC Center is um, very close to us in Bangalore. And I'm sure many people would like to visit your center and the great work that you do. And so look forward to many more interactions with both of you.